Good morning. A lot has happened over the last few days, so this blog is going to be a quick rundown of Saturday's action. So cool. What a day. I started the weekend on a remote stony beach, waking after about five hours of sleep to catch the high tide, which basically means I didn't need to drag the Schiller bike over 50 metres of stones before reaching the water. Then I made a 10 mile crossing in which I saw seagulls feasting on jumping fish, so cool. And I gave my butt a bit of a rest and sat on the side of the Schiller bike drinking some peach juice, standard behaviour. I battled some serious wind and waves for about three hours in annoyingly weedy water, which meant every so often my prop got tangled and I drifted back 50 metres whilst untangling it. So annoying. And then I had a rest on a beach. Then I continued and found a great campsite with a slightly sheepish welcoming party. The welcoming party, though, left a few gifts for me, so I spent half an hour clearing the site with a paddle. I'm pretty sure this is what iPhone slow-mo is intended for. I dried some wood, then dried my clothes, I took some photos of my solar panel, made a time-lapse of the tide, and nearly got cut off from my campsite because the tide rose so fast. Then I shoveled some more poo, I erected the ten teepee, looked at a stranded jellyfish, watched the Hertegruten pass, and all the while, although this was a top-notch campsite, there was one slight drawback to the place. These birds. I think they've got some little, ba little babies nearby because <laughs> they've been dive bombing me. Whoa! The local Arctic terns are fairly boisterous to say the least, and I realise that it's fairly hard to do anything when you're being attacked all the time. Whoa. Luckily, they were soon to have a new target. My good friends Andy and Chris had flown into Tromso on Saturday afternoon, and they paddled and pedalled for four hours to join me for the next week. Oh man, that was pretty epic! All of a sudden though, the local search and rescue was whizzing around the fjord. A number of their team sprinted over and asked me if I'd seen any local fishing boats capsized nearby. I hadn't, and then he ran back to his boat and the search continued for the next half an hour. It was crazy. This water is close to freezing and nobody would last very long in it, so we watched pretty anxiously as multiple boats and a helicopter scoured the bay. Eventually the rescuers came back and told us the person who called them in had some ambiguity about what they'd seen in the water, and they eventually came to the conclusion that maybe the capsized boat they'd seen was actually Andy on the second chiller bike. To be fair, he's always flailed around whilst doing exercise, but it was super impressive to see the search and rescue in action. We were just glad that nobody out there was in actual danger. These waters are lethal. Andy and Chris were pretty tired, so I totally took advantage of them and pretended that there were faster gears on the Schiller bike. <laughs> that would have given you at least four miles an hour extra. Is it oh, twist? I found that, but that doesn't do anything. Oh yeah, uh... They can't find the gears. Guys, there aren't any gears. <laughs> <laughs> I love my gullible friends. Eventually, totally ready for bed, we settled down around a fire with a big old moon rising to the north. It's always good to have friends around.